Hey guys, Robin Robbins here, founder of TechnologyMarketingToolkit.com, where we work with VARs, MSPs, IT service companies to get more and better quality clients through strategic marketing systems. And um, I had something that came up that was really interesting on our member portal. We've got you know thousands of members who log into our member dashboard, and we've got this thing called the Q. It stands for Questions, Updates, Exchanges. It's a private member group, and a lot of great questions and discussions happen there. But this one I thought in particular was interesting. And I'll summarize, it was from Ron Rothstein, and he actually was asking I, that he needs a good elevator speech, if you will, for managed services, because he's got clients that are paying for block hours. And, uh, you know, he's approaching them to switch to managed services, and he's kind of struggling with, you know, why should they sign up for managed services versus what they're doing now? Now, that's not necessarily even the most interesting part of this discussion. What I thought was really interesting was that a member posted, hey, you don't need to sell managed services to be proactive. I mean, that's the whole, you know, everybody would say, well, that's why you need managed services because we can be proactive. And her point was, you can do that with block hours. You can still deliver managed services, if you will, proactive support and do it under a block hour contract. And she's right, you can do that. But my argument is you never want to sell block hours. There's a reason for that. And there's actually a couple reasons. Um, one is that block hours focuses the client on your hourly rate instead of the value that you're bringing. And when they're focused on the hourly rate instead of the value that you're bringing, they're always going to be worried about price, you know, and then it, it invites price shopping because there's always somebody they can find who's going to do it cheaper. You know, okay, you want to charge $120 an hour and they're going to say, well, hey, wait a minute, Bob down the street charges only $100 an hour. You know, you're a lot more expensive. So I'm going with Bob down the street. What they don't realize is Bob down the street doesn't know what the hell he's doing. And so he's mucking everything up, even though he's cheaper. Um, or he might take three hours to fix something because he's not as experienced or he's putting a junior tech on something. And so now you're paying for three hours instead of what could be done in one hour. So that's one of the reasons I don't like selling by block hours. The second reason is now the client feels like they have to keep count. Uh, you know, were you really here eight hours? Uh, I thought I saw your guy going to lunch or did you really spend that time because some of it may be remote and there's no way for them to really police that and know whether they're getting overcharged for the hours or undercharged for the hours. Um, you know, and, and, and it just creates a situation where the client can be taken advantage, advantage of, you know, and, and to my point earlier, um, when you are selling block hours, you're incentivized to do, find more work and take longer because you're getting paid by the hour, right? I mean, why wouldn't you slow walk every fix? Why wouldn't you give it to junior guys who are going to take five hours instead of your most senior guy who could get it done in an hour, but he's expensive, right? And so when you explain this to a client that doing a managed services agreement where there's a set number of services that you're going to provide and there's a dollar figure they're going to pay for that. See, you are incentivized now to keep the network quiet. You're incentivized now to be efficient and effective instead of slow walking it, um, taking longer than necessary to do the job. So that's another reason why block hours actually is not good for a client either. Because again, you know, if you get a dumb dumb, you get somebody slow, you get a junior guy, et cetera, you know, you, the client could end up spending a lot more. And then the other reason for that is you on the other side, if let's say you do a really good job at running your business, you hire really good quality people, you have systems and processes in place, you, um, you know how to resolve tickets quickly. So in other words, you're really efficient. Now, if you're really efficient, that profitability should go in your pocket. But if you're doing block hours, you lose that, that advantage, you, you, you lose that profitability because now like everybody else in the industry, let's say it would take them five hours to do a project. It takes you maybe four hours to do a project because you're efficient, good at hiring, good at managing, good at uh, organization, all those things. So that profitability should go in your pocket because the value is the same to the customer, right? So again, that's what, these are reasons why I really don't like selling via block hours. And if you want one final reason, again, when you sell block hours, it almost always invites a discount conversation. It's like, okay, so if your hourly rate is $150 an hour, but if I buy, you know, 20 hours every single month, can I get a discount? They almost always are going to ask for that. So again, that's another reason why I don't like 
block hours. So I know you're probably thinking, hey, I want to know the answer to the managed services question. So you're going to have to tune in for another video on that. But I did want to make sure that you understood that selling via block hours is not always the, the best and the right way to do things. I actually think that um, in some cases, selling some sort of a hybrid where there is a managed services agreement for a set very defined set of recurring services and then any additional projects that need to happen are quoted on a project basis and that way um you know you get the recurring uh maintenance gets done the client knows that it's going to get done there's a set price for that but then the, any network ads extras changes projects and so forth you get paid for because just like i don't like block hours the other thing i don't like is these all you can eat managed services agreements where you say hey it's all included for one price and it really isn't because like if their entire network burned to the ground like physically literally like the building burned to the ground or they had a ransomware attack and you had to restore their entire network a lot of MSPs that sell all inclusive would go, hang on a second, we're not doing that for just your managed services fee. That's a project you've got to pay us more. And the client's well within the rights to say, hang on a second, you said it was all inclusive, all I could eat. That's what you said. You know, you're like the buffet line is all I can eat, right? You're golden corral of IT. So I don't like uh, all you can eat either. So I think the, the answer to this is managed services with, again, with a set defined number of recurring activities that are going to be ongoing every month then with certain things carved out for projects that are block time when i say block time like project uh, and build that way separately may be the best approach to that so i hope you appreciate that stay tuned for another video i'm going to talk about how do you actually sell managed services what would be a uh, a, a good way to position that um hit the like hit the subscribe give me a thumbs up you know give me a little love That'd be great. Appreciate it. And uh, stay tuned for the next video.